Men dressed in long kurtas and lungis, their heads covered with the red turban we might call pagri, a particular kind of handmade flower tucked in that turban. Carrying a rather heavy jola on one shoulder, a gourd flute called morli in one hand, and another percussion instrument called damru in the other. To any one of us raised in the South Asian countryside, the sight of such men ushered beautiful memories of watching their enchanting performances from the tribe we called Madari or snake charmers. In Gujarat, they either belong to Lalvadi or Fulvadi community. The jola they carry gives away their professional identity. You would never see a vadi without his jola. There is treasure in here. They would respond to any queries on the contents of the jola. It is a response that, that would make us wonder. Who carries treasure in such a shabby looking carrier? But the various types of snakes held in the cane baskets that they carried in these jola are nothing less than treasure to this community. The snake charmers are an itinerant community. Their traditional profession of snake charming and performing magical tricks causes them to lead a wandering lifestyle, setting up makeshift homes wherever they found work. It is as if their life will come to a halt if they stop wandering for work. As a result of their occupation, they could never choose to settle down in any village. Generations of Vadis have continued to lead a nomadic life, and this lifestyle was also the reason they neither had any official document of their identity, nor a permanent address to call home. However, with the implementation of the Wildlife Protection Act and the ban of capturing wild animals, the Vadi community lost the right to practice the only occupation they knew. The community was left to find answers to the enormous issue of earning a dignified living. They began to take up menial labor jobs, and if those did not come through, they stretched their arms for begging. The occupation changed, but the wandering continued. Decades ago, a few Fulvadi families chose to spend the monsoon season on a wasteland situated three kilometers away from the village of Kankar in Banaskarta. Since the villagers did not object to their settlement, the Fulvadi families began to feel at home and develop connections with the villagers. As a result, the village panchayat provided identity proofs to 124 families. The district collector allotted residential plots and sanctioned aid to construct houses on the allotted plots. Consequently, 124 families moved into Pakka houses. However, Apart from the 124 families who made it home at Kakar, there were 177 other Vadi families awaiting documentation for their identity and a place to call home. Apart from the monsoon season, when most nomadic communities stay put at one place, these families also visited Kakar settlement during the wedding season. The Vadi weddings are interesting rituals to witness. Interestingly, a Vadi wedding costs just 5,000 rupees. It is fascinating to learn how people can find joy even in limited resources. After we came into contact with these families, we drew the government's attention to their fundamental issues that needed to be addressed. As a result, 90 families were allotted plots and documents of identity issued to those who were still waiting for it. 72 families received government assistance of 45,000 rupees. The economic condition of the Fulvadi community is very poor. In the entire settlement, not a single family can afford to buy a bicycle. Their abject poverty is one of the causes of their marginalization. Sadly, the poor in this country gain importance only when political parties decide to play vote bank politics. As soon as the government assistance of 45,000 rupees reached the accounts of these families, greedy interest groups began to loiter around them. One of them succeeded and took up the contract of constructing the houses. Each of the 72 families gave the first installment of 21,000 rupees, a sum total of 15 lakhs, to the appointed contractor. Construction began but turned out to be of very poor quality. The confused Vadi families did not have the courage to speak up. 
the social welfare officer warned the contractor and later stopped the construction work. Unable to meet the quality guidelines, the contractor left the work midway. Later, these families requested us to help them finish the construction of these houses. With 21,000 rupees already spent, only 24,000 rupees per family remained. 32 houses were located in lower ground with poor soil quality. Building a house that would last them decades was going to cost way more than budgeted. VSSM took new estimates for the construction that came out to be 1.5 lakhs for 72 houses and 2.5 lakhs for 32 houses. It was a substantial amount we had to mobilize, but a decent house is everyone's dream. These families were first generation homeowners and we wanted them to have homes that their future generations could enjoy. Instead of opting for poor quality construction that would crumble down in a few years, we wanted to opt for good quality houses that were sustainable, well-designed and very long-lasting. As an organization striving for a greener planet, we also wanted to minimize waste of precious natural resources and be mindful of and reduce wastage of taxpayers' money that fund all the welfare activities for the poor. After carrying out the required soil tests and understanding the needs of these families, we designed houses that had the potential to hold expanding families by adding a second floor if required. It took us two years to build a beautiful settlement of 90 homes, complete with basic amenities. VSSM wrote to the district collector for water and electricity connections to the settlement. We needed to drill a bore well for settlement's water sufficiency. Sri Piyushbhai Kotari of Dwellex Foundation provided funds for the bore well, while Wasmo built a 20,000 liter water tank. And each house received water connection under the government's Nal Sejal scheme. Obsolation of their traditional occupations as well as a lack of education and relevant vocational skills means the Vadi families continue to wander for work, which requires them to take their children along. Since the children are required to accompany their parents, they cannot attend school in their village. Over the years, as the elders began to comprehend the importance of formal education, we started seeing children staying back in the settlement while their parents traveled for work. The pocket money of 150 to 200 rupees could not last long, so during weekends, the children would set out to beg for food and money that would last them throughout the entire week. Breakfast was a luxury for these children, and lunch happened in school, and dinner was rotla mirchi. Vadi is a very orthodox community that functions according to the rules set by the community elders. Educating their children has been one of the toughest challenges we have encountered. According to their rules, a girl cannot study beyond fourth grade, while a boy can go up to school up until eighth grade only. VSSM decided to tackle these issues head on and challenge these rules. We built a hostel for the Vadi children in Kakar with major contributions from Sri Pravin Bai Shah of Pravin Millennial Trust. Sri Piyunch Bhai Kotari of Dwellex Foundation, Jetco Organization, Mumbai Young and Mumbai Young Volunteer Group. Apart from them, numerous well-wishers contributed towards the construction of a hostel that can house 170 children. As a result of VSSM's continued endeavors, construction of numerous settlements is underway. However, the lack of earning opportunities near their homes requires the elders to continue to travel for work. It is necessary to create such hostels around as many settlements as we can. Chanti 
Education is the most powerful tool to eliminate poverty and deprivation. VSSM requested the Chief Minister of Gujarat, Sri Bhupendra Bhai Patel, to grace the dual occasions of housewarming as well as dedicating the hostel to the community. Sri Patel accepted the invitation and agreed to attend the ceremony on May 20th, 2022. The Chief Minister also instructed the Banas Karta administration to gear up and connect the poor of the district with various government welfare schemes. As a result, with an objective to reach the nomadic and denotified families of Banas Karta, the district administration organized Sewa Setu program in each block of the district. The program connected 9,000 individuals to various government schemes in a single day and 970 homeless families received residential plots the same day. Very soon, these families too will become first-time homeowners. We are grateful to the dynamic leadership of the Banas Karta District Collector Sri Anand Patel and District Development Officer Sri Swapnil Kare for their swift action. It is for the first time that any district administration has sanctioned benefits this swiftly. On May 20th, our Chief Minister Sri Bhupendra Bhai Patel arrived in Gakkar. He began by visiting the hostel and interacting with children. I wish to study after fourth grade, but my parents are refusing to send me to school. Please tell my parents to allow me to go to school. Bharti, a fourth grade student, came up with this very honest request to Sri Bhupendra Bhai. Upon hearing this appeal, Sri Patel instructed the officials to ensure that not a single child drops out of school and do the needful for the children to remain in the school. It has been 75 years since independence, yet nomadic and denotified communities remain at the margins. Our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Bhai Modi's concern for these communities led to the formation of a National Welfare Board focusing on the development of these communities. During his tenure as the Chief Minister of Gujarat, Sri Narendra Bhai Modi had initiated introducing special programs focused on the development of these communities. Sri Narendra Bhai is the first Prime Minister to take concrete measures for the development of the nomadic and denotified communities. As a result, our expectations from him have also gone up. We are grateful, nonetheless, for all that his efforts have accomplished. In light of the efforts that our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi has dedicated to make these invisible and addressless communities part of the mainstream, we have dedicated this Kakar settlement to him and named it Narendra Nagar. After the housewarming ceremony, Sri Bhupendra Bhai Patel, Sri Pardip Bhai Parmar, Minister for Social Justice and Empowerment, Sri Kirti Singh Vagela, State Minister for Education, attended the stage event that followed the traditional Guru Pravesh ceremony. The entire program was attended by 10,000 people, where the Chief Minister assured these families of their government support. Prime Minister Sri Narendra Bhai Modi has pledged a home for every homeless person by 2022. And under this pledge, 90 families moved into their homes and 89 families received residential plots. The families will soon have a roof over their heads, where while their children will have the opportunity to go to school where a brighter future awaits them. The entire atmosphere of Kakar's Vadi settlement was brimming with joy. There was a cheer on the faces of these homeowners. We are grateful to our well-wishers unrelenting support and warmth that enabled us to build these dream homes. Narendra Nagar is a result of a proactive partnership between government and society, and we hope we can continue to work together and create many such nuggers in the future. Our best wishes to homeowners as they begin a new phase of their lives.